recently, even big creators, like I know Sloan made a video recently talking about it. He has like 400 K subs about, and he's really popular, gets a ton of views, but he talks about the worst stuff, right? The stuff that YouTube hates. Mm -hmm. And he was even talking, he's like, I'm so fed up because I can't even say what I want to say. If I make a video, I actually stand behind, it's going to get demonetized or worse, or like threaten my whole integrity of my channel. And he was saying, he's like, no one even uh, gets back to me. It's, and it's the crazy, so many people are experiencing where they react or they include something that is on YouTube, like a picture video, and then they get striked for something that is literally still on the platform. Yep. Welcome back everyone to episode number 22 of the Johnny Rogers show. My guest today, you know her, you love her. She's a host on Inform Overload and Top 10 Beyond the Screen, ladies and gentlemen, Mackenzie Smith. Hello. I feel like there should be like applause added in the <laughs> <laughs> I need a little soundboard and that would kick things up yeah. a notch here. <laughs> Our word uh, that we're starting with is controversy because pff, that's what we talk about literally oh, on the daily. That's our day in day out literally. Our bread and butter it's all it's mm -hmm. all controversy um is that is that why you wanted to like go off of that one word was just because it's the nature of our job and people don't really understand it yeah i think that it's first thing you know me i love the juicy gossip literally gossip is my life thank god i get paid to like write about it and because all this knowledge i have i are always had from like twitter and i was always one of those people on like stan twitter like watching everyone get canceled um, so it's just fascinating to me, like people's reactions to stuff and like, you know, certain things people are getting canceled over. It's like that one person does like the same thing or two people do the same thing. And one person, their whole career is destroyed. One person ends up kind of fine. It's just crazy to dissect. And there's always a big scandal going on. Obviously the stuff with Brittany right now, Brittany and Jamie Lynn. So I just figured, uh, we're the best people basically to talk about. We're the best people to talk about the word controversy. And that was a yeah. big thing too, that Jared was talking about on his episode was like the, the idea of like canceling someone, like somebody gets canceled and like, he's like, what does that honestly really mean? Because you see these people like David Dobrik just like come back out of nowhere. And he didn't even actually really go away. He kind of just transferred to like Facebook and was just uploading yeah. videos to Facebook. So it's not, it's not like his career was done. It's, it's. What I think it is, is uh, canceling someone is just like crossing the finish line for these like mobs on Twitter that want to feel like they're, I don't know, like it's an overused they term, but so, social justice warriors and overused term, yeah. but yeah, having, having some sort of power or gaining power, but like, I, yeah, especially people that are at their height at the top too. It's like, if you're killing it, like you better watch out, like Mr. Beast better watch out anyone who's doing really, really good. Um, there's always somebody yeah. digging through their tweets or the, the shocking thing though is that how many people have like really terrible old tweets like it is shocking and it's also from my view is what we do is like you know news reporter in the sense how can you not delete that like are we not yeah. obviously you shouldn't have said it in the first place sure obviously yeah. but let's go past that point remove once you blow up a little bit yeah get some notoriety Twitter, look through your old stuff as this actually just happened. I'm a really big fan of Bravo liberties that like Bravo and one of the cast members on real housewives of Salt Lake city. Um, she's been God, cast that show for everywhere a now. full season. Oh my, it's so amazing. Oh. And, um, she just got exposed today for having some really, uh, you know, racist and controversial tweets that mm. or maybe tweet at Facebook, something. And it was like out there this whole time. So it's like, girl, did you not know you're going to be on national TV oh on a reality show? Yeah, for real. That that part boggles my mind. And, and the whole um, there was also that whole scandal with oh, who was it? The um, was it the Bachelorette where she or the Bachelor? Yes, I think so. Was it the Bachelor? Bachelorette is this the one where she went to the, the Bachelor? Party? She went to the party. It was one of the girls on the Bachelor who had gone to the party. A plantation party or something. Yeah, something like yeah. that. An antebellum theme party. Is that a word? Yes. Know, where they all dress up like it's the 1800s and celebrate. You know what I mean? Like yeah bad taste yeah. like definitely terrible like but again it's it's the mob that i worry about like there there's a different thing to like holding someone accountable and being like yo what you did was like really fucked up 
And especially if it's even through like today's lens, let's say, because maybe mm. what was bad in the seventies wasn't viewed as bad then, or I mean, what was normal in the seventies wasn't viewed as bad then, but now we're like, oh, that's really fucked up. You know what I mean? Yeah. But now I find we do give people a pass for that though. If yeah. it's like an old one, we're like, okay. But if yeah. it's something recent, it's like, oh, you're you're like you know better. Lit yeah. on fire. Yeah, yeah. The mob thing though scares me a little bit. And like you touched on Jamie Lynn and I, I want to like circle back to that because for, okay, I have been a Britney stand forever. All right. Mm-hmm. If anybody wanted Britney to be free more, it was, it was us who were making constant videos about like how fucked up the conservatorship was and like how she had been, we were just covering it nonstop and a ton of other yeah. channels were too, but like, you know, give credit where credit is due. And then the second that I feel like a bit of sympathy for Jamie Lynn, it, everyone starts attacking me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it, yeah. It's and very so it's, strange. It, it's, and I'm not, I have more integrity than that. Like, I'm not just going to allow um, a few hundred comments decide how I view the world, you know, like, mm-hmm. I'm not going to change my opinions just to make them happy. That's called feeding an echo chamber. Absolutely. And I feel like, no, we're actually very similar in that way. Being in our position where you've seen so much, I really judge people a lot less. Like you have to do some really bad stuff for me in my mind Mm -hmm. to cancel someone. I personally don't cancel anybody. Like it's very hard. No, no, we don't. That's that's something we should make clear. We don't cancel people. We just report on what the internet is saying about them. Yeah. (laughs) Because so many people are like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Everyone hates a person. (laughs) I won't uh, like automatically unfollow them. Like there's Mm -hmm. only a few people where I've reported it and I'm like, I'm actually going to take a personal action of not watch this person anymore. That like very rarely happens for me. Yeah. Like the the whole like R. R Kelly, Bill Cosby. Like I I have Bill Cosby albums. Those are in the garbage now because he's a piece of shit. Like, yeah. and, it, and it was proven, you know what I mean? Like he's, he's in jail. These are for illegal. And these are illegal activities. Too. When someone yeah. does something illegal, we're in a different ball game. We're not talking mm-hmm. about little cancel culture, yeah. like people like microaggressions or anything like that. Yeah. Like they, he did illegal things. I'm trying to think of other people. James Even Charles David Dobrik crazy. arguably did illegal things. He didn't personally do them. James, I think is worse because he personally mm-hmm. did things over and over um, and I think James is one of those people who has seriously suffered the consequences. He's True. someone who is actually canceled. You look at his views now, they're horrible, it's never plummet. trending. No one wants to collab with him, but then David Dobrik never been better. Yeah. He can come right back. And, it, and it's because David Dobrik's thing was more so like a bad personality trait. Like he was just a bad friend at times who was like yeah. hungry for views. So he would force his friends to do like very dangerous things to get those views and so you could be like yeah he's yeah. a bad he like wasn't hiding it he didn't do something I'll never illegal forget. though like yeah when he came back so he obviously got canceled the reason i hated david the most is because i'm a super fan of jeff wittick absolutely love him mm-hmm. and then david almost potentially oh. killed him like really literally risked his life this is real life this isn't canceling this is a real life this is yeah. when we need to separate it for people, people that don't like, know like do you want to tell them the story of like legal. sure so basically david dobrik has all his friends or basically his little puppets that does whatever he wants for views on his video and mm-hmm. so one of david's stunts was to have this like big rig in the water like swirl around like i don't excavator. even understand yeah i don't yeah, even understand like what was so them great about it to be honest but they were just doing their little spins and it wasn't exciting enough for david of course so he started to ramp up the speed oh that was the thing is david was operating this too yes <laughs> yeah, made yeah. Me clear david was like filming literally filming with one hand operating with the other hand which is even A more giant crazy. piece of machinery in the giant middle of the machinery water. in in water in like not that high but in but in water in water yeah yeah in like a big lake. sure um, so just so many bad factors anyway. And then the crazy part is that Corinna cop was on another one of the blog squad members was on this thing and David kind of ramped it up and kind of shocked her. So she was like, stop this. Like you take things too far. Like you always do this getting really mad. And then Jeff Wittick, unfortunately stepped up and he was like, oh yeah, let's do some crazy shit, whatever. He did totally consented to it. But anyway, David, again, took it way too far. I guess he, he sped it up too fast. And I didn't know these machines have like auto shut off. So he was going so fast, it like auto shut off and then it stopped. And then 
Jeff kept swinging and hit his face right on this like steel, big ass steel beam. Yeah. And his face was like, and then he I dropped know, into the water. So he was like yeah. drowning too, essentially yeah. in the water until they were able to pull him out. Like just absolutely horrific. Like, so crazy. This is if he would have died, David Dobrik would be in jail. He probably could sure. still be in jail. He would if, be in jail. Jeff would that be homicide to. or what? what? Yeah, that'd be manslaughter. Manslaughter, that's what it is. Yeah. Oh my God. So like really serious stuff. So anyway, going back to what we were saying. So that's why I really hate it. I was like, this guy is doing like putting people's lives in danger and like does not even For care views. anyway. And then when he came back in his very first video, he literally does a, it's not as dangerous, of course, but after being, you know, everyone getting mad at him for doing these dangerous stunts, he literally does another dangerous thing when he comes back. And it's like, bro. So he just like did not care, but his fans clearly don't care either. They're like, we want to mm-hmm. see this. So, yeah. so whatever. And like the, the, the whole, the whole Jamie Lynn, Britney Spears situation too. Like uh, you watched that um, podcast. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to watch, I'm going to watch the, the second half actually right after this podcast. Um, Want to come out today, or I think it's kind. Of, I think it came out today. I'm pretty sure. Interesting. Um, maybe it. Maybe it's at midnight. I'm not too sure, but um, we're gonna look for it. But like, it's midnight, yeah. I, it, the Good Morning America interview. Those like mainstream media shows. Whenever somebody goes on one of those shows, I don't really feel sympathy for them because I'm like, it, it can be easily edited and manipulated to make you feel a certain way. If they yeah. go on a podcast, that's a very different thing. You're talking about an hour, two hour long conversation, no cuts, no editing, no breaks. Like mm-hmm. you're watching every single moment. The cameras are on her. She doesn't have someone off camera that's like feeding her. You could argue that maybe yeah. Alex was like giving her like softball questions. Like the fact that she was reading off of a sheet, I was like, hmm, were all of these questions like pre-approved by Lou Taylor? Like wh- what, what's happening here? I didn't think of that. Mm-hmm. I, you know, they maybe could have been all pre-approved and that, and that was fine. But then Alex goes off script. She starts asking questions, like just making eye contact and following up to what Jamie's saying. Yeah. So that right there. And then Jamie, like people were dragging her over like the fact that she couldn't remember all these details from her childhood i'm like you're talking about like very traumatic time in her life and she was a pregnant teen pregnant teenager who was told to abort the child by her parents and by her team and everyone else yeah and everyone and And i'm sure by the father everyone everyone wanted her not to have that kid and she decided no this is the one time that i get to take control of my life and i'm gonna have this this baby and like you know but it's just it's just it kills me to see so many like Britney Spears fans just doing the same thing that they didn't want happening to Britney. Now they're doing it to Jamie. That's so true. And it's really the, the frustration and anger. It's weirdly, it's being directed away from the adults, Jamie. Who and are Lynn the ones Spears. that should be held responsible. Yeah. And it's being put onto this person who's 10 years younger, who I, she even said in the interview is always an afterthought. I completely agree with that. I don't know why people make it seem like Jamie they Lynn was like the darling child and then Britney was Spoiled the one that brat. they dropped to the yeah. side. Yeah. Uh, no, honey, Britney was like the shining star paying for all their lives. She was getting triple A treatment and positive. Mm-hmm. And Jamie Lynn was like, hey, like the parents of Jamie Lynn were like, don't bother us. We have to deal with Britney. Yeah. So I'm sure that's the truth. Jamie Lynn was getting shy, sidelined her whole life. And and I don't, and I can't really like get behind this whole like, oh, uh, Brittany or Jamie Lynn was just stealing money from Brittany and blah, blah, blah. And she was mooching off of her and, and uh, yeah. living off her money. She was on one of the biggest Nickelodeon shows ever. She was the star yeah. of that show. And she wasn't allowed to spend all of the money. It's not like she just, she's not like a normal child star that would just like blew through all their money. And now they're broke and working at Target. Like Mm -hmm. she was given an allowance of $500 every two weeks, which is not a lot of money, not a lot of money. And I'm assuming the other half of it hopefully went into a savings of some kind, but I'm guessing the adults took it. Yeah. Which, Do we have more info? That's what I would like to know. Everyone's saying I need that to she see profited receipts. off of her. Yeah, I need I to don't see receipts. Think, the only thing I think we know is that Jamie Lynn lived in one of Britney's homes or something. That's the only thing the that condo. I... It was like the condo in like Florida. That. There was like, they said that Britney had bought the condo in Florida and she had been there. Like, okay. Like yeah, if, if my if, a condo... If my brother had my... bought a condo in Florida, he'd probably let me stay there too. Like it's a, it's a different thing maybe like if... I, I can look from the outside looking in, I can understand 
the easiest route to go is like good versus evil, but it's yeah. way more complex than that. It's way more complex than that. And I just don't want to look at people as being like inherently evil. And I, I can't like, I can't like just yeah. all of Especially a sudden when write she's this out narrative. Of the spotlight. Like she's not even yeah. trying to get clout for the no. most part. Maybe you can argue a little bit, but she's just trying to live her, have her family she hasn't done worked in a while. I don't really know her whole history, but mm-hmm. she's laying low and she was brought into this. And now she has to feel she has to defend herself, which she should be. I guess the timing of this book is, is curious, right? It's like, was sure. this in production for a long time beforehand? Why would you release it now right on the heels of this, the conservatorship ending? So there is some, I think it's a good, questions. look, here's the thing is like, let's say she had this book done and she's been sitting on it forever she didn't know that like britney was like nobody saw britney being released nobody saw that coming. Yeah. like it felt like it dragged on forever like it, like two years basically it, yeah. It, yeah it dragged on for two years of people like wanting to see her released so you're telling me that as soon as she sees all this stuff she's like i guess i better start writing my memoir <laughs> do you know how hard it is to write a book yeah. Like how difficult that is to go through, like, especially a memoir. It's like your life. You're trying to get every single detail, right? So you're calling people up to double check things. Like she said many times in the interview. Yeah. I don't, I think like, it's just her way of being like, here, here's my side of the story. So that like the media and whomever, like p- people on Twitter don't start running yeah. with their own narrative because that is being really harmful to her. Like she, her kids, she's getting threats about her kids, which were absolutely disgusting. Yeah, like I saw one people of them. Yeah. saying that your your daughters deserve to be like raped. Like, are you yeah. kidding me? Are you it's, fucked? It's like despicable. what? That's disgusting. And it's crazy. You pointed out today. I feel like the hatred against Jamie Lynn is getting so bad, so unwarranted that fans are almost starting to side with her. Mm-hmm. They're like. Oh, um, sorry, my email just popped up. Uh, they're like, you know, Brittany's being way too hard. And the comments are now like, why are you blaming this child? She's 10 years younger than you. It's not her fault. What's little Jamie Lynn going to do when she's literally has like a child? Is she going to go up against her parents, the only people she has? Yeah, her no? own family? I don't think so. Her own family? Because even, I mean, this is probably another, it's probably controversial conversation, but there is a reason the conservatorship was put in place. And I feel that Brittany is not most likely 100% well, especially mm-hmm. if some of those stories are true. Like what Jamie Lynn she, said about- You got to remember she was on thing. lithium. Yeah. She admitted in court that she had been put on lithium. That is not, mm-hmm. those effects don't just go away. Yeah. The, the, the years of being gaslit don't just go away. Like she is mm-hmm. psychologically traumatized and without a doubt, she has people around her who are, I'm guessing, not good for her and feeding no. her bullshit, feeding her like, uh, your sister deserves to go to hell. And she's like, yeah, she does because she doesn't know any better. She, this is yeah. her first experience with social media, really being able to say whatever she wants, being yeah. able to say whatever she wants and being able to like whatever. And her fans aren't going to be the one that hold her accountable. They're going to just cheer it on. And what, and knock on wood, I don't want this to happen whatsoever, but if, God forbid, Jamie Lynn decides to take her own life because this gets too much, those Britney fans are going to be to blame, like, yeah. for egging this on. Like, that's that's controversy taken to a whole nother level. Like, we at some point need to realize that we need to, like, pull back a bit here and not be so careless with the way that we comment on things because on the other, on the other end are real people. Like you're fucking, you're fucking with real people's lives. It's really, it's, it's crazy. I think that we as a society need to, and hopefully the fans are starting to see, these are sisters. You should like pick up mm-hmm. the phone and talk exactly. to each other with like a mediator. A this plane. should not be done online. And maybe yeah, Brittany's too new in this space to know that this isn't like a normal, people don't have family arguments over Instagram. You know what I mean? Maybe you say a few shady things. Sure but this it's a little too much now yeah at this point it's just getting reckless which is a comment that i see repeatedly and then like you were saying before like she would she put up a post saying that she was she should have smacked her in the face when she was 12 years old yeah you're talking about I didn't abusing even a understand. child understand i literally didn't i read that one today mm-hmm. what does that even mean she's watching tv yeah like 
I don't even understand what the negative, like what? Exactly. So it's like, where TV, I, what's so wrong with that? Where are these coming from? Yeah. You know, and I, I, I get, I get what she's talking about there. She's giving an example of like, I have all this stress because I'm an adult at that time where Justin broke up with her and she's coming home and her little sister is like, you know, um, her mom is, is like bringing her milkshakes and she just gets to kick it and watch TV. Yeah. I understand like that there would be a little bit of jealousy where you're like, man, I wish I could just have a normal life like that, where my mom just gives me a milkshake and, and whatever, True, but I have, have paparazzi and... up my ass. Like, yeah, I get that. I, I totally understand that part of it, but violence is the answer. Call it. And it's not Jamie Lynn's fault that she has no. a Did more she... normal life. Exactly. And it's not Jamie yeah. Lynn's fault that she was just 12 years old wanting to watch TV, not really understanding what was happening around her because she was shielded from a lot of it. Yeah. Ah, that's crazy. I don't know. It is. I'm very excited for that second one though, because I think yeah. the first episode of Call Her Daddy was very much more just on her life story. And mm -hmm. because Jamie Lynn is an interesting person because, she, you know, she was on Zoe 101, a massive show. And then teen pregnancy, that was a big, like, Huge. whoa, like she's, her whole career is over or, you know what I mean? She's kind of letting go of her career in order to have this child. And it was very controversial. Obviously people are like, why would she do that? Um, and that was even crazy at the time. So there's so much happening with these two people. The conservatorship too also made a lot more sense to me once hearing Jamie talk about Brittany, like telling her mom, if I buy you a house, will you divorce him? Yeah. And I was like, what? Like if that, if that fact there is true, that Brittany said to the mom at the time, like divorce him and I'll buy you a house, like bribe the mother. Imagine being Jamie Spears, where you're like realizing that your daughter has more money than you right now. She's mm -hmm. breaking up your marriage because she feels like it. Uh, maybe he's being a piece of shit and an alcoholic and he's never I'm around. Sure he like, was. I'm sure he was not, not good at that time. Yeah. I'm sure he's still not a good person, you know, but like, again, I don't want to demonize people too much without actually knowing the full spectrum, but, and I don't excuse the conservatorship whatsoever, but I understand why he would take advantage of that moment to get, mm -hmm. get back control. It wasn't about Brittany. It was about him getting back control. Because he had to live yeah. in a house that was paid for by his daughter, and he wasn't happy about that. that I think it was a big ego. Yeah. I think really the, the yeah, all of the heat needs to be on Jamie Spears. I don't know about the mother. I don't know about Lynn. Mm -hmm. I feel like she was more so along for the ride. She's like, I don't really know what the right answer is. And Jamie Lynn kind of alluded to that when they were talking about who made these decisions that Jamie was, Lynn was going to go to this place to have her child. Who are making these decisions? It's these media people, the managers, their team. So I think Lynn Spears is like, I'm just going to listen to what these people say because I don't know what's happening. And then Jamie Spears is like, okay, let's take this moment to get control. And then Jamie Lynn, the kid is like, literally what is happening? I have a baby. So that's all. Yeah. She's just going to follow along with whatever, with whatever they want, right? Like whatever yeah. they think is best for her, she's going to do that. Mm -hmm. And you can't really blame her. When I was 16, if my parents told me, you know, like, this is bad for you, you trust them. They're, they're the adults, right? Like, you just yeah. think that they know what's best for you. And it turns out, Especially like, Especially if you've had bad experiences, like, with this person, like, if a sibling was having, you could tell they were going through a tough time. You're like, okay, maybe some measures do need to be taken. Yeah, yeah, of course. And like, uh, I don't know, just the whole, the other thing that freaked me out was like the, um, the story of like her bringing her into the separate room with like a knife and saying, that, yeah. you know, like that whole thing too. It's it, it, all these details. It's you're concerning. Just like, it's concerning for sure. You're like, yeah, there's something there. There's a reason why all of this happened. And like that, like we said many times before, the fans are going to help help with any of that. But um, I want to get off <laughs> Jamie Lynn sure. and Britney Spears topics. Cause I think we, I think we got enough covered there. Beat but those to death. Um, yeah. I want to talk to you about uh, before you became a YouTuber and before you got into with the studio, uh, did you work, you, you worked as like a, an you were out in LA, um, if I'm not mistaken, you did like a influencer, you were like an assistant or something. Am I wrong no, about so that? I, very wrong, which very is funny because it looks, Hilarious. no, it looks weird. I've like, I feel like I've had like 10 lives but, <laughs> and none of them make any sense. So uh, yeah, so I went to university for business. Like I was going to have just like the totally normal experience. I even had like an internship well in school at like a regular, like nine to five job. So totally lived that life. And I 
appreciate it, respected it for what it is. But right before I was about to graduate from university, I was like, I just really want to switch it up. Like, I'm just like, I really just want to do something crazy in the summer after graduating. Um, because I didn't lock, I hadn't locked down a job to like go to, like a lot of people had. And I was like, usually I was that person. I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to get the, you know, the best job at a school. Yeah. But I was like, no, I need to take like a second here and just, I don't even know, think, do I even want to go down this road, whatever. So I decided. How old are you um, at this I, time? Uh, 22, I guess. Because right okay. when I'm graduating <clears throat> university or 21, 22. So I decided that I wanted to do, I wanted to go to LA because I love, I've always loved YouTube. Like I've always really, that's my thing. Like even now, like I rarely, I don't even watch a lot of TV. I don't watch a lot of movies. I literally watch YouTube and like reality TV. That's like all I watch. <laughs> Which is so, pretty much um, reality TV also. <laughs> yeah, it's literally <laughs> yeah, yeah. two forms of yeah. like unscripted. Um, so I've always loved YouTube and just been fascinated. Like these are my celebrities. Like YouTubers are the people that I look up to. Like I don't care about real celebrities, right? Mm -hmm. Anyway. So I was just going through, I don't even know, like a phase. And I was like, I really just want to go to LA and like, see what it's all about. I feel like it was really like a time when LA was like, so hyped up as being awesome for YouTubers. And like, everyone was just killing it. And there was so much fun stuff happening. So I was like, I'm going to go to LA for like a summer, but I need a purpose. So I decided to get an internship. And in America, the unpaid internship is like very common. And because to get a paid one is just like a whole thing. You have to get like a real visa for that. So if you do like an unpaid one for a few months, you don't have to like do too much stuff. So I actually worked with like an agency that helped me get this unpaid internship. And it was, I was doing marketing or like social media marketing at a crypto company. Oh, and wow. At this Back time, then. Literally, this was 2019. Uh, and I didn't know anything about crypto, right? They're like, literally in the interview, like, do you know anything? I'm like, no, but I'm a fast <laughs> learner. Yeah, And um, I, what Mr. I did, Honest. my actual job wasn't anything to do with crypto. So they didn't really care. Um, I was actually doing kind of a lot of what I do now, which is like writing for okay. just like topics and whatever and doing like some little tweets and Instagrams and social media. Uh, so anyway, I get a job at this place, totally unrelated to the reason I'm here just to like have fun and like see influencers, whatever. So I'm just working at my little crypto job, learning about crypto. Bitcoin was like 10K back then. And it was a big thing like everyone in the office was like bitcoin just hit 10k they're like telling me to buy bitcoin i'm like i don't have 10k i'm not gonna buy yeah. bitcoin i don't know anything if my dumb ass would have bought like 500 dollars worth of bitcoin yeah 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 it makes me so mad every day um but anyway I think about the same thing literally i listen remember day. listening to andreas antonopoulos who was like dubbed himself like the bitcoin guy and this was like probably like 20 i want to say like 2014 i yeah, started like hearing crazy. about bitcoin <laughs> And I was like, this guy's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh. absolutely. You like buy it at a vending machine. You're like, what yeah, is yeah, this? Yeah. It's fucking crazy. Sorry, go ahead. Fucking crazy. No problem. Um, but all these people, it's, it's like a, was a legit, like one of those Silicon Valley-esque startups where they had like, you know, venture capital giving millions of dollars. So it was very much a lot of like young, really smart people. Like few people there were like verified on Twitter, Instagram. Like one of them was like, um, in like the teal fellowship anyway just very like excellent people um and then i'm just here like hey <laughs> so anyway, like you guys need coffee or <laughs> literally so through this and again all these people are like around my age mm. so i got to know some of them obviously because i'm like trying to make friends and stuff and one of the guys randomly like the weirdest person like the most well-connected person ever um was really into crypto obviously he worked for the company but he also worked with like influencers and man, kind of like managing low key and just being friendly. I don't even really still know, but let's say managing some influencers and through him. And like, I obviously talked to people about my love of YouTube and whatever. So he kind of started hooking me up with like hanging out with these people. So I started to go out to like dinners and like parties and like events and shit where you'd see like the, literally all the big influencers, like names, wow. like big influencers, like David yeah, Dobrik, yeah, yeah. literally Logan Paul, all these people, um, like the freaking Ace Family's little, not little, the Ace Family's, they have this basketball tournament, not anymore, obviously, but, or during COVID, but anyways, like these big, big events. And um, 
anyway, so I just had like this crazy summer and like another thing I was going to be like potentially my word for today, but I didn't feel I had enough to talk about on it is manifestation because I feel that I completely manifested that experience Mm. because it's like, how do you end up? That's like the stupidest story to get to my end goal, (laughs) which was literally, I just want to see what like YouTubers in LA are doing. And then you're like, here, here we are. Like exactly what I did. Um, and yeah, obviously I had zero clout, like zero connections. I didn't know a soul in LA and, um, had obviously like the best summer of my life. And thank God it was right before COVID too. So this is like Uh. summer 2019. And then I came back and then like, you know, six months later we are in lockdown. So during lockdown, I was like, thank God I did that. If I hadn't done that, I would have been so mad at myself. Yeah, for real. Like that's, that's such a good experience. And I remember like taking off to, um, I like, cause I had done stand up in, in Toronto and all over Ontario for so long that I was like, I want to see what like comedy clubs are out. Like same thing manifested. I want to see what like comedy clubs in the U S are like, you know, I want to go yeah. to America and like perform there. And then that way I can say like, yeah, I did shows in the U S and so I literally booked, like, I remember looking up, like, what is the cheapest flight to, cause broke, what's the cheapest <laughs> flight to America? And like, go, I think it was Chicago was like one of the cheapest flights. Like it was like, it was like crazy. And I was like, okay, cool. So I looked up the comedy clubs in Chicago and then found one and then ended up being able to book a show. And then once I'm in America, I was like, cool, I can fly anywhere in America domestically, even cheaper. Like if you want to fly Toronto to LA, it's let's say like 1200 bucks or something, but you could fly Toronto to Chicago for 400 and then Chicago to LA for like an extra 200. You know what I mean? Like, you know that. Yeah. So like domestic flights within the U S are like cheaper because you're just flying within the country. You don't have to cross any borders or anything. Um, so that's always the move. If you want to like get to a spot that's super expensive in, in the States, try to find a state that's like cheaper to fly into and then, and then just tran- take advantage of that. transfer from there. It's so much better. Cause it was cool. Cause you, I spent like, well, I, I didn't really spend very long in Chicago. I spent like maybe 48 hours in Chicago. And then I was like right to LA. Cause my main focus was like, I want to go to the comedy store and like see this place. And thank God I did before it all like went down because apparently that place is like, so did you perform or you, I didn't perform at the comedy store. Just wanted to see it. Just wanted to see LA. Like I'd heard so much about it. I just, I probably I actually have a comedy store story. No way. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. So this is like literally like the weirdest summer of my whole life. So right at the tail end, I was like, had like an Airbnb place that I booked for like, let's say three months or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And then I wanted to stay a little tiny bit longer. So I actually decided to get a hostel in LA because they're not like, they're cool. They're they're basically just like, yeah, yeah, it's literally just like a hotel, but like, you know, it's like a dorm, literally like a dorm. So you like talk to people. So they had one of these like events at the hostel and it was, it was like karaoke or some anyway. So I'm at this event and I start talking to this guy who is a comedian and I'm like, Okay, you're a comedian. Sure. <laughs> so, uh, anyways, we're like talking, and then he's like talking about, oh yeah, I think we exchanged numbers, and he's like, oh yeah, we can go out sometime, whatever. So we, I end up going out with him a few days later, and little I know, this guy's like quite a decent comedian. So like he performs at the comedy store like quite a bit. Oh hell yeah! So we end up going one, uh, just like walking by. My name like, dropper. <laughs> No, I don't no. want to think about. He's not like huge. You can but, tell me um, off there. <laughs> yeah. So we like go in and uh, we're like walking around. He's, you know, talking to like the security guys and whatever. We're like going backstage. We hop into a show for like a second. And um, anyway, it was just like a cool, like, damn. <laughs> it was, like, a cool place. Moment. Yeah. And I think I walked by a comedian just like in passing. So there was a few people like actually there that night cool I forget the person's name that was like a woman that's like oh yeah you would know Whitney Cummings maybe no not a comedian just an actress oh just an actress in like the crowd I'm sure yeah yeah that place is that's what's cool about like the comedy clubs in like Los Angeles and what's uniquely different about those places specifically is like there's so many actors and huge celebrities that just live in California that's like chances Mm -hmm. are there could be like you know pick your person jennifer aniston could just decide that she wants to go watch a comedy show and then you've got her in like the second row you know what i mean like hell yeah you hear like crazy stories like that i I couldn't imagine that that kind of pressure though like looking out and i'm like what the fuck 
like just seeing <laughs> is that ross from friends like i don't know why i keep doing oh friends. yeah i could never <laughs> i'd be like what yeah but yeah manifestation is something that i didn't really start to like r- fully realize until a little bit later in life but like there's there is something to it there is definitely something to like not just like telling yourself what you want and then trying to like find a way to it but like you said at this company vocalizing it so like being Mm -hmm. like this is what i'm interested in because you never know like i I find that um acquaintances are more likely to like go above and beyond for you than like a friend would even because like an acquaintance has like something to prove they want you to like them they want you to like think that they have like all these connections and what have you so like those people are honestly going to be the ones that are going to get you towards your end goal faster than anything else yeah it's so funny because everyone always talks about networking too and it's that obviously that summer was like a, a networking extravaganza right but it's like I don't I still don't even understand networking. I feel like mm. everyone's like, oh, just, you know, me- uh, message someone on LinkedIn and ask them for a job and they'll give it to you. And I'm like, okay, no. like that. <laughs> and then they're like, oh yeah, if you just, you know, ask your friend about an, a job opening, they'll just have one. So it's, I still don't even, I kind of feel like 99% of it is bullshit, but there is something there. <laughs> networking is simply like just smiling and being polite to people. Like just making like yeah. a good impression, a good impression on everybody, and like making not necessarily making sure that they know like who you are or what you do, but just like make, leaving enough of a lasting impression that like there could be some some beneficial like outcome to that to that relationship, right? Like I scratch yeah. your back, you scratch mine, kind of deal. But like, I don't think it means like you can just, you connect on LinkedIn and then boom, you're now your assistant to the CEO or whatever. Yeah. No, I'm on that side of TikTok where it's like, do you want to become this? And yeah. We're uh, the, do you want to be assistant to the CEO? Just email them. Oh my God. TikTok. Girl is... bossing close to the sun, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I was, I was going to say like um, controversy too, for people that are listening to this for the, for the word controversy. Um, on Inform Overload and many of the other like studio channels, the reason why we we don't play around with like like you've just heard me say like a million words that would get us like taken. I down. know I was shook when you're saying these words. I'm like, <laughs> I'm just going for it because we don't get to, and I'm like, what? A, no, like this is gonna be fine. It's gonna be on if it gets taken down from YouTube, it'll be on Spotify or it'll be on like whatever. But we don't have that luxury for work. For work, it's like. If, if, if a video, if a channel gets taken down, like people lose their job. Like we can't, yeah. like the, people think that we're like, um, what's, what's a common like thing that I always see. It's always Facebook that has like the conspiracy theories. They're like, Oh, we're like downplaying. Yeah. They're like, they're trying to downplay like what actually like is protecting happening. Like, them. Nope, not at all. I'm just trying to yeah. keep my job, sir. Like that's, that's literally it. Mm-hmm. The difference too, between yeah. Facebook comment section and YouTube comment section is ridiculous. I don't go. I've heard uh, Sarah talk about it a little bit. I don't even go in those waters. I've heard really bad things. <laughs> it's bad. I've, I've, I've di- I don't even explore it. I dip my toes. It was funny because there was this, um, I think it was the video I did about, the title was like Kylie Jenner and Travis Scott like help sneak Kanye into like the birthday party or whatever. And I go to see how it's doing on Facebook. And then I click on the comments and someone's like, uh, except he didn't even mention Kylie <laughs> and I was like fuck <laughs> so, I, so I re- I'm like I never reply like, I literally oh, never no. I never answer any comments yeah. I just don't but I responded yeah. to this one I was like oh that's weird I'm pretty sure like I did mention that later on and she yeah. she was shocked that like the person in the video was actually responding to her comment and she was like oh sorry I, I guess I didn't watch it all the way <laughs> I was like what sorry <laughs> what and I just responded yeah. like, don't worry, we, we're all guilty of doing that, like commenting before watching the whole video. But like the amount of people that do that is just blows my mind. The yeah. amount of people that just even just see the thumbnail and then leave a comment and then click off the video. You're like, what? Yeah, what I'll never mean? understand people that even leave comments. Because like mm. I said, like I am an insane stan, super stan of YouTube and whatever. And like literally spend 80% of my day on YouTube, including work. The amount of times I've left a comment is like four in my entire life. And like, I Never. love, you know, 
commenters respect you, obviously comments are great, especially positive comments, whatever. But it's like, for you to go like leave a negative comment, like, I don't even understand. And like, just click off the video, maybe throw a dislike, sure. I don't know. Yeah, if that makes know. you feel better. Like, but mm. I, those people, I just pity. It's like, how how bad must your day be that you have yeah. to like try to tear someone else down? That you have yeah. to leave such a negative comment that you're just like, just so riled up. It's like, I can't even imagine the situation that those people are in. Cause I've never once felt the need to like, I, okay, I'll, 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 I'll say, I'll say this. I have felt the need to leave shitty comments many times, <laughs> I'm sure we all have, but I haven't done it. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've even typed it out and then hit delete. <laughs> like wow like just love that. like, that's very like therapy yeah, <laughs> like, like write a letter yeah, yeah 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 <laughs> yeah that's what I want to say to people is if you have something shitty to say just type out that mean comment just get it out just type out yeah. everything you want to say and then just hit the x in the top right corner of your screen <laughs> yeah. and then go outside just go outside like it, literally touch a lot some of these grass. people mm, yeah touch some grass <laughs> <laughs> yeah another thing on the topic a little bit of uh, uh, demonetization or words we can't say. Mm -hmm. This has always confused me. The reason we have these words that we can't say is because YouTube wants to put ads on the videos and Mm -hmm. they want to be advertiser friendly for Coca-Cola. Totally. So I don't understand why they like remove channels and like strike you for these little things that don't seem like that big of a deal. Like just demonetize the video Mm -hmm. instead of deleting my whole channel. That's what I don't understand. It's like, it's not like we're showing really like the worst of the worst stuff. It's like you say one wrong word. Yeah. And then you we're not showing decapitation strike. videos. Literally. It's like, just demonetize <laughs> like, it. Yeah. And then if someone wants to watch it, they can watch it. And Pepsi's happy. I don't understand. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Like just, just don't put any ads on that video. Like they, yeah. they need ad- because by deleting a whole channel, they're just losing more ad opportunity. But I yeah. guess because they're so big, they just don't care. I really think it's just like an algorithm thing or an AI thing that they've set up and it just auto strikes. And then it takes forever Definitely. to actually talk to a real person to like get them to do something about it. Like, thank God for our Twitter page for being able to like get a hold of YouTube so often because like, I don't know how else, if, if me, for example, my channel, it's not monetized right now, but if it was mm-hmm. and it got taken down, like, I don't think I I could get a hold of like YouTube creators. I think I would just be perpetually like banned or have to start like a new channel or something. Definitely. Even big creators. Like I know Sloan made a video recently talking about it. He has like 400 K subs about, and he's really popular, gets a ton of views, but he talks about the worst stuff, right? The stuff that YouTube hates. Mm -hmm. And he was even talking. He's like, I'm so fed up because I can't even say what I want to say. If I make a video, I actually stand behind it's going to get demonetized or worse or like threaten my whole integrity of my channel. And he was saying, he's like, no one even uh, gets back to me. And it's the crazy. So many people are experiencing where they react or they include something that is on YouTube, like a picture video. And then they get striked for something that is literally still on the platform. Yep, that's what happened with Tom. That Central. is so wild to me. Yeah. It happens like a lot. I think Sloan yeah. said the exact same thing. So I'm like, if this is a super common thing, Philip DeFranco or Ethan Klein, also was going after them recently and it's like do something that seems that like a, a very easy fix to me what Can I talk about that controversy ethan klein and jordan peterson <laughs> oh yeah tiny canada's, I am not canada's bad boy <laughs> okay i'm not super up to date about it so he well I'll just like give you the cliff notes essentially I, I guess there was an older interview that ethan had done with jordan and he decided that he was going to remove it He's like, mm-hmm. I, I think that his views are problematic and blah, blah, blah. And I don't, I don't want to have this interview up on my channel anymore and he takes it down. And everyone yeah. was like, why wouldn't you leave it up and let the viewer decide whether or not it's like good or bad? Like, you, it's not like he's on, unless, unless he was, but I don't think, I never watched the interview, but like, unless he was on there, like agreeing with every point that he was making, then that says yeah. more about Ethan being like a hypocrite or what have you, but like. I don't know. He, he seems like somebody who just loves to stir up like d- drama. And then again, he has the mob behind him. Like he, it's just like Brittany yeah. has the super fans. He's been like, doing it more. I actually, the only thing I saw about related to this Jordan Peterson thing is that in the replies, people would be posting interviews that Ethan has done. They're like way worse than the Jordan Peterson mm-hmm. one. And basically being like, why do you still have this up? Like, I think there was one with Crystalia. It's like, 
Chris D'Elia has documented done some actually bad things. I think one was with iDubs where we all know iDubs says choice words <laughs> that oh. like he like calls his fans like Whatever. slurs basically. Um, anyway, so those are still in, on YouTube, like slurs and all, I believe, like not even believed. So anyway, so it's like, there's an argument. It's like, why him, Jordan Peterson, and not these other mm -hmm. people who are arguably just as bad? Yeah. And all Peterson is really saying is like, <laughs> like, he just doesn't, he just didn't want his like speech to be legally like restricted. I think a lot of people yeah. like had a lot of misconceptions about like, why he became like such a controversial figure. And it, again, it's the same thing. It, it all goes back to this, like, it's attention span, right? Like mm -hmm. it's the, it's the read the headline and leave a comment. Like people hear one thing and then that's all they believe, you know, like Jamie Spears is evil. All right. Got it. Drag her to hell. Like, um, you know, Jordan Peter, someone says Jordan Peterson doesn't think trans people should have rights. Okay. He's transphobic. Yeah. That's all I hear is literally that? transphobic. And you, like most people don't even look into it. They're like, oh, whatever. Yeah. That's it, it all close. came, it all circled back to like, I think there was like some bill that they were trying to pass in Canada that made it like illegal, like hate speech illegal or something, or speech was illegal. Mm -hmm. So that it was supposed to protect trans people because they believe that they were being like, you know, like, you know, I, I fully stand with trans people in the sense that like, that sucks if you are trans and you can't get an apartment, you know, because the, yeah. the landlord is a piece of shit and he's calling you all kinds of names and you got to put up with abuse from random people on the streets. Like you would want some power back. I, I totally get mm -hmm. that. But like, all he was saying was this is a slippery slope. Like I've studied this stuff. He's a literally like university professor at U of T. You don't get that just on because of nothing like you know you yeah. have to be a pretty smart person to become a professor like it's not just they don't just hand that out to you no definitely not and and like his base is like weak men who need like a, a father figure in their life you know mm -hmm. like they're not like they're not like these like alpha males who are like yes we will go like hurt trans people on, in the name of jordan peterson they never said that yeah. once they never said yeah. that once so it's just like, uh, it's, it's, that's a whole, whole other, whole other can of worms. So that <laughs> was interesting. It's yeah. Certain topics get so much more canceled or just like way more controversial mm -hmm. as opposed to others. Even. Yeah. It's, it's very interesting yeah. how the public reacts to this kind of stuff. Um, something I want to ask you too. And I ask a lot of my guests this too. It's like, what, what is something that you think like a lot of people um, like get wrong about you? Like what's a misconception that you often like hear about yourself? Some chance of clear. Interesting. Clearly. Like in like your the comments you think or any in, anywhere in life in general, yeah. A common misconception about you. Interesting. Um I can't really think of one off the top of my head because I feel like I'm a like a, a very straight up person. I really feel pretty unfiltered, like in my real life too. And I try not to be too filtered on YouTube, but at a certain point, it's like, I don't share too much of my opinion either because then it's like, literally what's the point that I just get a bunch of like comments or, you know, hate comments or whatever. Um, but I think for me, it's pretty much what you see is what you get. I don't notice a lot of people, I guess maybe do you have one? Like it was there when you met me, you maybe thought something and then you got to know me, it was a little different or something that maybe surprised you. Oh, dude, I thought you thought were an influencer assistant. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Study up all go. the vigorous background. Yeah, I didn't do my background work apparently. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, definitely. No, I think I'm pretty good in that. I don't have a big uh, reputation maybe mm -hmm. yet, so. Yeah. Not well, is there anything too. about yourself that like people might not know that you want to share? This is the chance um, to open up. This is, we're not being yeah. edited. We're not being cut. <laughs> no, definitely. Well, something I was talking about, um, w one of the things I was thinking about talking about, it was like adulting. Mm -hmm. And I guess it's nothing in particular, but it's like, definitely I'm 25 now. So it's a prime quarter life crisis era so it's especially with these lockdowns too in Canada it's like I feel that overwhelming feeling like oh I'm wasting the best years of my life you know these are the years I have to you know do my career you know maybe find a husband whatever it is this is the time and then it's like all gone mm. I'm in my mid-20s now and it's like what did I do 
did I do what I wanted to do? Well, I did some things, but I physically couldn't do others. And uh, just a lot of, I guess like, yeah, choices. It's like directions. The thing about adulting and being in your twenties, it's like, what direction is the right one? And I don't know. There's no right direction. There's no right direction. You really just have to like, I, I've always been a big proponent of like, am I having fun? Like, mm-hmm. I've just tried to keep that like throughout that, I love that. same thing. Like I, I've done a podcast a million times, but like the reason why those ones didn't last is because at some point I was like, I'm not having fun with this. It feels like work. Mm-hmm. Like I love doing YouTube because it doesn't feel like work. It feels like fun. Yeah. Like I'm just writing all day about like what people on the internet are doing or like wacky stories I hear. Like it's, that's amazing. And so to me, it's like, as long as you're having fun and you feel like fulfilled in that sense, it's like, you're doing the right thing. There is no like right way to do things. Cause we can always like look back and be like, Oh, I wish I had done that. Or I wish I had gone in this mm-hmm. direction or, or what have you. But that actually like leads me into <laughs> another question that I like asking too. It's like, if you could make a phone call to 15 year old Mackenzie, what would you tell her knowing what you know oh, now? My God. Oh, that's such a good one. Uh, I guess, I mean, I've done a pretty good job recently, I guess maybe more when I was 15 in since 22, since I kind of made that switch where I went to LA, I've been in super like YOLO mode. Like everything that I do is like, just do like the funnest, like I'm just trying to rack up experiences before I was very much like my five to 10 year goal. Like, what do I want to do? What's the bigger outcome? Like, what do I need to do to be CEO next year? Like, you know what I mean? Like the big, huge goal. And then like, how do you get there? But now it's like, I don't even know what's going to happen in the next month. Literally we, Mm -hmm. everything's changing in the world, um, you know, due to pandemic or whatever it is. Uh, So now I'm just trying to be like, okay, what is the decision I can make now to be, have like the funnest experience, like the funnest story or like the best thing. Like maybe what I'm doing is like financially not a great idea or like, I don't even know. You know what I mean? But Mm -hmm. I'm like, we're just going to have a good time. So I think 15 year old me would maybe say a little bit of that, just be like, just have fun. And, uh, but I don't have a lot of, thankfully I don't have a lot of regrets with like the choices or anything where I think I could have steered differently. I feel like I've done a pretty good job at where I'm at right now. Maybe I would tell her to I don't know, save some more money. You don't buy dumb shit uh, that's good. <laughs> when I had money. Um, save you know, some money, kid, don't buy like, dumb shit. Literally, you have like so much savings and then you go to LA for a summer. You're like, I'm going to be a freaking baller. <laughs> yeah, LA will do that too. You just start like spending for no reason. What's yeah. Baller on an unpaid internship. So love that for me. <laughs> yeah, it's like people don't know that. Um, I want to, for the people watching on YouTube, thank you so much. I want to share this here so that we can uh, give Mackenzie a follow on Instagram. It's Mackenzie Smith with two T's in the Smith. Mm-hmm. And, Mackenzie uh, Smith is so, uh, yeah, so, so take basic. <laughs> I need the two T's. <laughs> you need the two T's. And then don't forget to check out Where Are They Now? It's a new channel that you're, uh, that you're running here. I'm proud of you on that. This is like looking good already. I love the thumbnails. <laughs> Thank you. I'm really excited that Julia Fox one did uh, pretty well. So pumped yeah, about we'll that. Send more people your way. Check out TikTok, same, same username as well as uh, the Instagram. All the links will be in the description below and uh, your personal YouTube page too. Um, yes, I actually have an apartment tour coming ooh, tomorrow. Yeah. I don't nice. know when you upload this, but on this will be up tomorrow at 10 p.m. Really? So yeah. it'll be up by like two or something. Okay, there you go. So you can pop right. So you get to Mackenzie's see my channel. place, Johnny. Yeah, <laughs> you can pop right over to Mackenzie's channel and watch the apartment tour. Then, is there any um, final words that you want to leave the people with, or anything that you want to say? Uh, I don't think anything else other than just positive vibes, manifest your goals because it worked for me and Johnny somehow. somehow. But you also need to put some action behind it. It can't just yeah. be all mental. Inspired action is very important. I wouldn't have had my experiences if I didn't go to LA and like take that step. You know, something's happened when you just take a little leap of faith. Yeah. So take that leap of faith, everybody. Thank you so much to everybody listening on Spotify and iTunes. Don't forget to share the episode with a friend that always helps and leave a five-star review if you can and a comment down below. Uh, but until next time, I've been your host, Johnny Rogers. Stay classy. Bye, guys. 
You've been listening to The Johnny Rogers Show. New episodes air every Tuesday and Thursday at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time.